my packet, not Nate's. So did I. Mm -hmm. So did I. And they definitely are April's because my name's on them. They're using Nate's. So Well, I don't think we approved it. Did we approve April already? No, I think that that's that's what the intention was, that it was to have 12 fan maize. Okay, so we'll, we'll so. we can approve April's. Let the, uh, if, the, if the board's inclined for the meeting minutes for this evening, from May 3rd, 2016, we can uh, change that to the meeting minutes of the April 12th, 2016 meeting. And we can pick up the May 3rd minutes at the next board meeting. Does anybody have any questions or comments on this? I can't. I can't. You can vote on if you want to hear this. I'll make a motion as well. I'll make a motion then that we accept the, uh, the minutes for the April uh, 2016 meeting. Um, April 12th. I will April second, 12th. but I want to know that there should be a couple changes, corrections. Right? Yeah. Anne Marie's name has an E at the end, and they're also present work. Um, and then just some oh. capitalization, the executive director should be capitalized. Board members, the B is capital, the M is not. Just uh, maybe just look if I, if, if, so if I could, I got the E on Anne. Yep. Where, where was the next one, Joanna? Um, I just browsed through quick, but the... The second page, last paragraph, it's number letter D, it says. Okay. Uh, fourth to last sentence. So, so job performance, the executive director. Oh, I see, correct. Uh, um, capital E and D. Some boards have a capital B, some don't. Board is capitalized, numbers isn't, so we just okay. change those. Uh, other than that, I second with those changes. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Executive Director's Report. Yes. Good, hot, humid, and muggy evening, everybody. So this weather is, is uh, quite challenging for everything. Work in the field, in the office. Um, nearly all the recertifications for um, rents at Mayflower Court and the family homes are complete. Um, Kill Commons is the other state development and uh, they were completed in April and our group homes are on annual leases not renew not renewing until late fall or in winter. Um, we have uh, joint contracts with Department of uh, through Department of um, Health with uh, road responsibility and then then. Mm -hmm. So they just are mm -hmm. a uh, lease time that takes uh, hold of the property, pays us a monthly rent. Um, our annual audit, you know, for some of the members that, that are new and just to give us a, like a recap of sorts, um, was conducted not long ago and uh, we scored very high on that. Following that was a new AUP, which um, stand, it's an acronym for agreed upon procedures. And that was born out of the new public housing legal reform. We scored very highly on that once again. Um, not to mention we continue to rate as a high performer uh, with HUD. Last week, the facilities management uh, specialist for assigned to Pembroke came out. He's uh, new to DHCD and made his introduction. He met with me and with uh, Rick Mahoney, a modernization um, coordinator, for lack of a better word. And um, we started to go over, you know, general sense what, uh, you know, the new program that they plan on rolling out in the fall is going to look like. And, uh, you know, we, it was a very nice uh, meet and greet. And um, he'll, be re he'll be returning next week also, um, along with uh, housing management specialists to review our work order system, um, random inspections of units. We'll probably do a handful, like five or six, across the programs. Um, the 705s, the 667s, the different developments. 
Still fun. This is a 667. Mm -hmm. We have Flower Court. This is a 667. And then we have the scattered single family homes. Um, the 689s, while they, they may want to just take a look at the outside or something, but you know, they're under other management mm -hmm. for the lease. Um, Those are the group ones? I yeah, okay. yes, yeah. And so uh, they'll be doing a cursory review of, on the accounting side of payables and receivable systems as well. Um, on the management program side, we continue to manage all the programs for the Halifax Housing Authority. We're about two and a half years into a management agreement with the Halifax Housing Authority where we manage their 667s, 705s, and they, we administer a Section 8 program for them as well. Um, so we're about halfway through that five-year contract. Can I just ask a question? Um, what, is the, what was the contract um, amount that we can break this for a year for Halifax? Um, I don't know if hand, I, I would believe, you know, oh, I, I can't be exact, but I'd say 30000 for the year. Now, management program, we, we at the Pembroke Housing Authority have seven programs. Mm -hmm. There's the 667s, the 705s, the 689s. We have federal family, federal elderly, MRPP, and Section 8. Um, in addition to that, we have set up a new account in recent history or in a new program called management. And through management, we derive additional revenue for us on the business side for uh, you know, administering a Section 8 program, mm -hmm. which was the case in Holliston, which is part of the case in uh, Halifax. And um, you know that revenue comes in, comes into the housing authority, and it's also housing authority revenue. It's not uh, subject to scrutiny, or uh, I think uh, subject to being taken by the state or federal uh, government. So, you know, it, it enhances our bottom line mm -hmm. as we, mm -hmm. you know, run a business and enterprise. Um, just excuse me. Would you say you manage the, those programs? Do you just manage the um, billing and that kind of? Do you do research and all that too? We do everything. It's okay. all encompassing. Okay. okay. So the. Essentially, the duties and responsibilities on the administrative side of the programs, you know, day-to-day -day activities, you know, okay. month to month, year over year for a five-year term. Um, as the board may recall, you know, and I just mentioned, we administered the HCV Section 8 program for Holliston. We initially went in there because they had no one at the helm. Mm -hmm. And the, the chairman reached out to, actually, I think the chair was was with me at one of the uh, conferences. Um, and we went in there just as an interim administrator, thinking it would only be about six months. And uh, we've actually, upward of, I think, about two years, administered their Section 8 program. And our current contract expires at the end of this fiscal year, and Holliston will be taken back the program. And, you know, it too was a mutually beneficial agreement. We did the work. We administered their program. We didn't add to our overhead expenses. We already had that function in the office. And so the revenue received for it went to our bottom line, which was a good thing. Well, who's going to be doing the vouchers now? Are they doing in house? That's up to them. I think that they're going to be, they have, they, when we went in there, they were really in flux. But, you know, without getting into the details of their, their, uh, their authority business, um, they didn't have a director, they didn't have administrators or anything, so they, the thought was they were going to hire an ED or maybe be managed somewhere, but they got a longer term consultant in place, and I think that she's going to be, uh, she has been there now for a little while, and how she's going to uh, administer the program is up to the board, but I believe they'll probably use someone um, that she's worked with in her time. She's been um, working in public housing for about 30 years. Okay, yeah. Um, so, let me see. Yeah, like I said, it was definitely mutually beneficial, and we're certainly very glad to be of assistance in their time of need. And, you know, 
hopefully we'll never be vulnerable like that, but they clearly were. It was a, it was a tough place to be. Um, when we look at the financial reports uh, that I passed out, April's was in your packet and I passed out the May report. Um, we'll be able to look at those shortly, but uh, you'll see how well we're doing across all programs. Our reserves are once again at all-time highs, and it's a direct result of hard work by everybody, economies at scale, and, you know, I think simply working smarter, not necessarily harder. Um, our fiscal year ends in three weeks' time. A lot of work will be getting done on the admin side, closing out the year and positioning ourselves for the budget season and the next fiscal year, which begins July 1. Um, just looking at some of my notes. Um, we're also going to be kicking off uh, numerous new projects, which when we get to the CIP, we can touch base on some of those things. Um, the CIP is the capital improvement plan that was also in your back. A degree of confidence and trust in her. Um, Rick Shaw, he's our fee accountant for the, uh, he's an independent financial accountant that uh, does on a monthly basis financial report, compilation report, two of which you have there for April and May. Uh, assists during times of audit, quarterly, biannual, annual reporting that's required with HUD for the federal programs, DHCD on the state programs. He also is a big part of our capital plan, uh, budget planning and forecasting. Capital planning in only so much as the dollars and cents and how they balance out. Um, Rick will be coming out probably in August as we do our final reconciliations and annual closeouts. We are typically a month behind when the board's uh, meetings convene. So here we are in the June meeting. We will be uh, looking at warrants and reports for the previous month, mm -hmm. and it'll always be that case. Sometimes due to weather, people's vacations, or lack of quorum, work may carry over and we're unable to act on something, so we may have two at a time. So all your accounting is done by the staff? Not all the oh, accounting. Okay. Not all the accounting, but the financial and okay. analytical oh, okay. Okay. Uh, side of it is we manage the, the accounting in-house, okay. and then once a month, Rick comes in house and Doesn't does all the, he and an associate, they work uh, you know, probably a total of 16 hours to two of them and uh, compile the work. So he'll be coming in uh, in August and at that time we'll begin to present the next fiscal year budget for consideration of the board. And your fiscal year is? Our fiscal year ends June 3rd. Also oh, second. Yeah. And we're currently fiscal year 16, 17 begins in a few weeks. Um, this past Friday, we held a summer picnic here for the residents. Um, it was across all programs, so we let the federal uh, development up in North Pembroke know about it, and Mayflower Court over on the other side, and, and here at Kill Commons. And it was really a great success. It was oh, nice. awesome. You know, um, you know what? People were coming and going. But I, I, I remember seeing at least 50 people in here, I'd say 50 to 75, and then even after it ended, and, nice. you know, we had some additional food and things, people were able to make mm -hmm. plates. Some people came because it could have been personal reasons, health, physical, uh, you know, spousal, however. Free food. But they came, <laughs> right, right, and they made plates. I'll bring them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it, it did. Yeah, so it, and it was fantastic, you know, and, and it was a, uh, you know, collaborative effort. You know, some of the residents just were interested in helping out and doing what they could. And so we had tablecloths out and getting the food out and everyone's personal flag came into play, nice. putting out the tablecloths and setting up everything up. But it, it was a nice time help, uh, had by all. Um, it was really good seeing everybody. And um, so with that, I would say that's that's the extent of the director's report on uh, state of affairs, even though on a, every four weeks. It gets, but we did have a lot happen in the last 30 days, so uh, it's good stuff. So I would say go on and number okay, five. Okay, so we're going on to the um, April and May financials, May wants they will vote. These are these right here. Yeah. So 
if we, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Um, April and May, and I'm picking up the May one because it's the most recent. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that, would, that would be. Not just May is. Okay. You have, I, maybe I brought. No, you should do that now. I have it right there. I brought someone else's back there. Yeah, she has a. April? April. Yeah, Joanne has them both. Yeah, you can look at mine. It's April. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm looking at. Oh, you were looking at the wrong one. Oh, yeah. Line. No, no. I'm, at the I'm sorry. Oh, okay. These are the rickshaws compilation. I, got one. I was looking at the yeah. line. You have them. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I was a little surprised. I, didn't. I thought we were doing more. So if you looked at the May report, mm -hmm. and, and again, I appreciate. I know Joanna, you're informed about these. Uh, Jim and Carolyn have been looking at them for years, but for uh, for a new member to my mm -hmm. right here, Judy. Um, we go through each program, and I'm not going to get too analytical with okay. here, but each program, starting out the state, would be the, the 401. And so we would have a list of the assets, liabilities, surplus, mm -hmm. an operating statement, a detail of non-routine. Then we go into 689C. Those are the group homes that we have, the two properties I spoke of with Ben Fen and yeah. Road to Responsibility, where you have an operating statement. And those, mm -hmm. again, are just lease properties. Yeah. Um, after that, we have the MRVP, yeah. the Rental Assistance yeah. Program. Again, it, the oh. details are all in these pages. The mm -hmm. compilation, the last page, is really what we, we focus sure. on, because that's the mm -hmm. bottom line. So the MA111, just to finish yeah. it, is the federal program. That's the elderly disabled in uh, North Pembroke, McDonald Way. And then we have our Section 8 program. So if I bring you to the last page on the financials, this is the real snapshot. Again, we see these monthly. Mm -hmm. And so this is really what needs to be in the packet. And, you know, this gives yeah. it to us. But we have all the details mm -hmm. in the previous pages. Um, and if you just go across the top, the programs I mentioned, 400-1, that's the state elderly disabled. 689 is our group home, MRVP, mm -hmm. and we have our federal. And this is federal family? Federal, no, no, that is federal um, yeah. elderly, elderly disabled. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do, we have two units. There's 47 elderly disabled, and there are two units that are family units. So that would appear in this column, mm -hmm. too. Section 8. Mm -hmm. And then the management program, which mm -hmm. I spoke yep. to about a minute ago, and then you just had the totals on the outside. So when you look at it in a snapshot and you go across the top of the programs in the first line, that's our previous year. And so how we get there, you know, over the course of the year, the summations all appear below. We're almost done with the fiscal year. Can I ask? Yeah. Under management? Mm -hmm. Why are we in a deficit for twenty thousand dollars? Operating that? expenses. We what we do is when those we are have expenses. yeah those are expenses. So when we have different programs, for example, if we have a, an administrative position here, it's fun, that funding for that position can come out of various programs. Mm -hmm. And so when we have twenty thousand dollars in expenses, those expenses are going to be cut captured here. On an earlier page, you might see the percentages, and when we get into the budget season, mm -hmm. develop in the budget, we'll be able to break that all out. Let me interrupt for one minute. Also, um, during the year, you already know this, but during the year, Judith, uh, Rick Shaw goes through the budget. He'll sit with us in August and go through the mm -hmm. budget with mm -hmm. us. And then several times during the year, he'll come and he'll go through this with us in detail and because none of us profess to be professionals. We do well, this is, this two, is very simple. Two, two hours a month, but it, huh. he presents it very well. I mean, I work for nonprofits, and this is, we just sit in yeah. So it's not alien to you. you no, 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 yeah. no, 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 Essentially, though, are these two the same things? Everything that's on the AP warrant report is what we pay out gets applied to this? No, if you go into the earlier pages, you're going to see, because it gets a lot of the AP, for example, let's say we, a motor vehicle, you have a truck. 
that truck is going to be expensed out of, because the HA has numerous programs, it's going to be, its expenses are going to be spread out over various projects. The, this development, another development, a management program, our Section 8, maybe not a vehicle on Section 8, yeah. but a lot of the expenses are sprinkled out. Telephones, administrative supplies, those things because they help the overall uh, machine do its business, there's a proportionate share that goes to each program that we manage. Um, but it's a, that's a good question because it is, it is captured, but it's captured in the uh, programs where you know the cost would be borne out of. I'm looking at the, uh, just to see if maybe he had an example in here with a breakout. Yeah, this doesn't go to that. Well, actually, it does. Because it lists the program. Yeah, so it does. Yeah, the, I was look, on the first page, they were all the same. But you can see, there you go. Like, Excellent. On the second page, they bought gas. Oh, no, we paid for the gas bill for the McDonald's Way and Wisconsin. Correct. Office phone, 689, MRVP, Section 8, the, you know, it all. Postage. Postage, yeah, that's, another, that's, a, that's the best example. Oh, way to the class. Across all programs. So, so essentially everything on this AP Martin report is going to be applied to this big Yes, if it's booked for that month, if you're looking at May and those are Mays, yes, it would. Um, so again, if I go back and we have our program costs uh, year, year end, you know, standing, you can see where we were. Now it's not, we're not quite through the year, but if you look at the last line, current reserve balance, and this is with a month to go. So in the 400 program, our year end was 298.051 last year. Today, we're currently at 318. So we're up substantially over last year. The 689 program was at a deficit of almost 10,000. Now, it's worth a note. The deficit is a result of capital improvement. A number of years ago, they put a ton of money into the kitchens and handicap accessories and so forth. So there was a lot of money put in, but we were 10 grand down, and now we're projecting uh, reduce cutting that in half. So we paid down a lot of that. The MRVP, we're up again, not quite 20 percent over last year. The federal program, we're at 143. 595 and we're now at 164, 500. Huge change, huge improvement. Section 8, you know, that is so tightly funded that it's not really going to change much. Um, and again, that was the full year at just under 15,000. We're currently a little over 13,000, but we have another month to go as well. And then the management program, we ended the fiscal year with 25,507 as a reserve balance. And right now, we're at 56,000. We've practically doubled that. If we go into the totals, our fiscal year end last year, our total reserves were $477,067. Right now, we're at 553,740 with a month to go. Huge increase. Our reserves are really, you know, in year over year, we are retained revenue. Housing Authority. We mm -hmm. don't rely on subsidy to uh, house our residents. We do get financial assistance for capital improvements, uh, modernization, some mm -hmm. of that. But for the most part, you know, we're a very strong, very solvent uh, financial entity. I'll also say that that 553, that, that's after restricting $40,000. And that's for capital reserves? Yes. So while we're restricting 40, you might as well add the 40. Mm -hmm. So we've gone from 477 to close to $600,000. Now, that's excellent that we grow it, but we also want to make sure our reserve limits stay down. Like the state take it away? Is it like nothing? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What they, they, they take it away in a roundabout way. If you have X amount of dollars, the state will say, oh, use your own. We don't, we're going to give you less. Right. So, um, as we land the plane at the fiscal year end, and we plan and budget mm -hmm. for the next fiscal year, we will look very closely at our restricted reserves and our unrestricted, so that we're at 
the happy, healthy percentage, you know, where we want to be that, you know, yeah, everyone else wants us to be. Yeah. Do you do depreciation or not? We do not on the not on the financial analysis, right, just on, on inventory. inventory. We yeah. yes, yeah. and we also on monthly. Physical plant too, or? Yes, yeah. we do um, on 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 the financials. We book everything, yeah. even if we haven't gotten the money yet or we haven't paid the bill yet. Mm -hmm. You know, because of where we're sitting when we do the report, we still book all of our costs. So these are excellent reports. Very, very accurate, mm -hmm. very detailed. Um, you know, I, I apologize for taking a lot of time on it, but with Judy being new, no, I appreciate, no, I appreciate yeah. that. Joanna's had some years at this, and it's you know, for me, right? yeah. Yeah. you know, I mean, that's really the, the snapshot is that last page. Um, so, if you want, just want to, I'm sorry, I don't have any questions here, but no, that's quite um, right. do you charge an upper, is there an overhead charge on these contracts, or is, how does that work? Excellent question. On the on state contract work, you know, aside from procurement and bid process and so forth, there is an allowance for an admin fee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we're out there causing work to be done, there is a modest amount, and DHCD reviews it, and they may allow it. So if there's a ten thousand dollar job, just a hypothetical example, there may be a thousand dollars or eight hundred dollars that you know, the housing authority can all get in return for, you know, the months of planning it, engineering it, monitoring the work, closing out the work, all the meetings that are involved through procurement and, you know, on site. Because mm -hmm. if you have prevailing, we take the daily logs, who's working, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. So there is there is a lot of work, you know, that's less time that mm -hmm. a, a, an employee has with a resident, a prospective resident. You know, and we're billing them for that. We get we get a reimbursement. Mm -hmm. Yes. How do they go to reimburse the bill? We do. Well, it's it, it, in, in uh, layman's terms, we do bill. But when we do the um, request for reimbursements for, let's say, we do do a ten thousand dollar job and it's part of a capital plan and it's a project, the state will give us the ten thousand plus the little bit of the ad, mm -hmm. and we get that on a. On a you know, as we request it, and there's a lot of paperwork that has to accompany, as you can imagine, any type of a project, uh, there will be a reimbursement to the to the housing authority from the development. I'm talking about management contracts. So, like for Halifax, is that what you were talking about? I'm talking about in general. No, general. yeah, I, I took it as like just yeah. in general that yeah. we get reimbursements for. So, like Halifax, for example. Yeah. When there's expenses that Pembroke has to spend. Oh, we get reimbursed directly from Halifax. Right. So we would Absolutely. Bill, so we, would bill. we would bill Halifax, and then it's an expense that whether Halifax is paying Staples or paying us, it's just or or a gas company. So does Halifax have maintenance staff over there? No, they don't. So do we bill for the time and hours for our maintenance staff to go over there? It's currently it's built into the management agreement, and what we do is management agreement has two components. And without getting into the, those details, there's the management agreement and then there's a management work plan. Mm -hmm. And that plan calls out for the work at hand that's outside of the administrative side. Capital projects, capital planning, and causation. If we have to go out there and, and do maintenance and others, we have the ability to do get paid. On the, from the accounting standpoint, and Rick will be able to go over this next month, or in August when he comes in, um, he, he takes, he shortens the steps. Um, we have built into the management fee, there is the, um, the, a certain amount, a certain level of maintenance. If uh, we got into doing large capital project for them with our staff, rebuilding something, you know, then it's a different animal. But when we acquire Halifax, they have maintenance personnel. On staff already. They had they had one part time maintenance right. staff. So they but he but when but he retired he didn't retire but he right he quit. I understand that. But my question is, if they had maintenance staff there, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been in the contract when we acquired them that we were going to provide their maintenance staff for them. So I guess if they had a maintenance guy already in place and he since retired, why isn't Halifax? replacing 
serving and stuff? Why are we spending extra hours of our, you know, resources, time, money, gas, everything, mm -hmm. when they can hire their own and then as needed, if our guys needed to help out, that's one thing. Well, we if you go into the financial and you can, you know, under maintenance, because this is common to any, any of the uh, housing authorities. Okay. You, you, you could, I'm just going to the line items. It doesn't, doesn't matter uh, which one you look at. But there's ordinary maintenance. You have maintenance labor. You have materials and what costs. Number? Just, in, just in general, I just, you know, page three. You know, you have maintenance, labor, you have materials, supplies, contracts, then you have ordinary. Then there's extraordinary maintenance, which would be down near the bottom of the page, and so forth. When, if you have staff, that only covers, staff only covers one component towards the maintenance side. Okay. And it's been, it, it's been a uh, financial, I guess, analytical exercise. And, um, and the billing for maintenance is something that we're entitled to get reimbursed for. Right. And sometimes housing authorities will, oh, will enter into agreements where they absorb it for various reasons. It could be lack of staff, lack of qualified staff. Um, but right now, the Halifax Housing Authority has consideration to hire someone part-time, and they could. They choose not to. Without getting into their details too much, I give you an example. If someone only works a couple hours a day, and that's what it was, if someone's without a, an operating fan or lights, they may not get to it until 7 o'clock that night. Um, and that's assuming that maybe a part-time maintenance staff member isn't preoccupied with a, with a lengthy turnover, because if you can only work on a turn, unit turnover, um, an hour and a half at a time, it, it could really tie up that one part-time resource quite a bit. Right, but part-time resources, if you can be spending three hours, because that's where he's paying, because he's employed by Dexter, that's three hours less than our guys have to be over there. What it, you, you mean Halifax? Yes, yeah, Halifax. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. There isn't, a, there isn't any expenditure over there that we can't bill for for reimbursement. Well, should we start maybe next month trying to build for maintenance for the hours that, yeah. that they're not yeah. going to hire somebody? Yeah. I just think it would be beneficial to come back, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so, we're just trying to, oh yeah, back on that last page. You know, again, I was, I was saying that it's a, a snapshot that, you know, really tells you where we stand across the programs. Um, Rick's notes there, the Housing Authority reserves are at excellent levels pretty much across the board. There's only one month left in the year. Uh, we want all the budgeted work done to get the reserves done somewhat. One item budgeted, for, for example, was a new truck, which he will accrue at year end. We never got it, and we're able to just limp along with the, the, uh, the truck as it is. Um, the reason for this is when reserves get high occasionally, DHCD will dictate their use. I think we went through that, you know, trying to be at a good spot with our um, operating reserves and our restricted reserves. Um, management programs now have a reserve of 50K. Um, <coughs> and then lastly, oh, he says that compared to other housing authorities, uh, housing agencies, the Pembroke reserves are in the top 10% of all of them, maybe even better than that. And you know, I, I don't have a lot of experience with other housing authorities, but I do know from when I, when I speak with my peers that we are pretty healthy, you know, without getting into anybody's personal private business, but the reserve levels are solid. Um, <coughs> no, I actually, so, that's the April and May 16 financials, yeah. and then you have the May warrants, payrolls, and bills. And you know, the board could take a vote on each of those. That would be good. And then we'll, we'll do warrants next, or is that part of the vote? No, we can go through the the financials. Each of those meaning April and May. Okay. So, does anybody have any questions?
questions with regard to April and May financials? Um, I do specifically about the warrants, but not the accountants report. Okay. Are those separate motions? Or <coughs> we'll do separate motions. Yeah. Um, motion on the accountant population reports for April and May. We'll make a motion to approve. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Joanna, do you vote? Yes. I made a motion. Oh, that's right. So Joanna I made the motion. It. James I seconded. Seconded. Mm -hmm. So three. Yes. So next, with the you will have the uh, AP warrant report for May one through May thirty one, two thousand sixteen. Also in the report, you'll have the. Uh, um, section 8 that's in there as well and the payroll so I don't know how you know each each one is is separate the uh, housing report is dated <coughs> that's not pollen in my throat 5-2 yeah it just has the one date 5-2 five 5-2 two, five two, because it's all run on the one day that the half payments are made and then <coughs> The uh, payroll is the next. Right. And Joanna, did you say you had a question? On Just it? a couple on the warrant ones. Um, so all the items listed under here for Halifax. So those would be items that we're going to reimburse for for Halifax. They come mm -hmm. out of our budget, and then yep. will we pay for them directly? In there? Yes, we do. In fact, um, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a, a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD <coughs> or from uh, from Halifax. Uh, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on uh, yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. You have the total under, under the um, And then inspections <coughs> for Duxbury. Um, Joanna, did you say you had a question on the warrant ones? Um, so all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like around $730. So all the items listed under here for Halifax, so those would be items that we're going to reimburse for Halifax. Yes, we do. In fact, when part of Rick's compilation report is we get a whole list of reimbursables, whether it's from DHCD or from Halifax, memory serves, I think, you know, I just got this on yesterday, and I think that it was like made total like
function on its own so that it doesn't fall through the cracks that the federal reporting is still conducted you know and, it, and it's just moving whether where Duxbury goes with it you know with management hiring an ED doing anything that's okay and the section 8 just goes back to wherever they want it to go I, I yeah yeah Clear for me all the time. Um, is that the monthly accounting fees, 29.40? Is that every month we pay that? No. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's huge. We quarterly, there are different things that we have to do um, reporting to, to the state or to HUD. So there are other, other things that are required of them to do. Modernization report, that gets done, that's separate from the month to month. Yeah, it is big. And then also we have auditing when you do the AUP, and that was like $3,000 across the board, and which is reimbursable. We'll get that money back from the state. What is the monthly fee for the uh, The basic, I think, is about nine, what is it, 900? For here, Sorry. for Pembroke, for Rickshaw, for Rickshaw. Yeah. 350. Oh, 350. is it 300? It's 350. That's for Rick Mahoney. No, that's Rick Mahoney. Oh, okay. Rickshaw. The, uh, the accountant. I know. Wait a second. Yeah, Rick Shaw, uh, Rick Mahoney is um, uh, weekly, three hundred. That's not. It's only three. Well, we can look it up. <laughs> yeah, I think it's here somewhere. Yeah, it's I right. mean it's going to be in here if we look it up. You can always email Joanna the answer tomorrow. Yeah. I know it's wrong. <laughs> I mean, I oh, we know it's wrong. I just saw the 2941. I do too. I think it's 350. I think it's 350. Yeah. I, think I can get that information. Yeah. yeah. With all the everything day, day in, day out. Any further questions on the ago I, I just brought up and just to we have we have new board members but the personnel policy um, we talked about in the coming months looking at it again and not tighten it up so much as there are some ambiguities in there and then there are a couple of items in there that you, we get a mixed signal on yeah. for example I think that at one time we all worked full time and it was 40 hours of work week. Then right. 40 hours became 37.5. And then somehow, then it's 35. So we have staff that are at 35 and we have staff that are at 37 and a half. That's an example where, because then it gets into definitions of full time. What is full time? That's, but that's just like one example where it, it doesn't quite jive from one section to another. Um, so in the next, I think, couple of months, and I know it's going to be budget season, I'd like to begin the process of the board, you know, looking at it. I'll, I'll send out a copy to each of you and just start thinking about, you know, the semantics and how it works. Um, yeah. It, you know what? It's, I were, it had issues with that when she was even here with some of the hours. So, yeah, uh, I think we should look at it and tighten that up and have it make more sense. Yeah. That's a good recommendation. Okay. I mean, uh, that's really what I wanted to say is I wanted to make sure that we, we get it out there and we start doing it. And there's other other uh, items within it, you know, time, you know, leave time, uh, vacation, accrual. There's just a lot of things and they all dovetail one into the other. And, and I think it's worth at least trying to update it because I know that 
as you, as uh, the Very chair amazing. just said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you, the more you read it, the more confused yeah. you get, and then yeah. you, you second guess what your initial yeah. uh, we had that take was. was a yeah. Why don't every every month just just go right through page by page through the personal policy every month just bring a couple to it or bring a couple or and yeah that you know what I'd like to get the whole thing in advance though so get the whole yes. thing out and then yeah. we'll just well, focus on one or two sections yeah but only because if we read the whole thing uh, if you just do one piece at a time you might realize three months later that you approved something a month ago right. or two months ago that now is in conflict with something we're looking at six months later well what we could do I'd like to look at the whole thing. Get it as a whole, right. but I, I have to agree with Joanna that if we break it out, it doesn't necessarily have to be acted on. We can break it out where there's four parts to it. Don't vote on it, but we take it under advisement until we have the thing in total, yeah. and then we really look at it and... and it can be changed? Yeah. Right. Make some suggestions, if not, we'll approve it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the employees are not town employees then, they're, no, they're housing, not. housing employees. Correct. Yeah. And the policy for personnel and everything else is set by the board. Mm -hmm. you know, and just adhered to daily by admin and by the residents. And then the state has to approve each thing that we adopt or change or add or anything, right? Yeah, and you know what, when they come out annually and they take a look at your policy and they see something, they, they see something, they may say something, but they may not see something that they really should have, like, you know, maybe 35 and 37, you know, they should have pointed something out like that, and, you know, they're just as human as we are. Um, old business, Duxbury, as the board knows, go, going back, and not, not for a big history lesson, but uh, for Judy's um, background, um, previous directors have had a long history and di open dialogue with Duxbury, um, collaborating on planning, strategies, things like that. And in recent years, um, there was a move for smaller housing authorities to look to develop that relationship one, one step further with management. Out of the blue, you know, it, it sort of just accelerated this past year, and I got a call from Duxbury and apprised the board, and there was some dialogue that continued from there. Um, out of that came a proposed management agreement that was developed to manage Duxbury, and that agreement is, is a two-party agreement, but it gets reviewed by the state. It went to the state, the state came back and said at this time, essentially, they weren't, they weren't in a position to approve it, looking for additional information. What were they looking for? Some of the well, things that they didn't approve it. They haven't yet. Okay, gotcha. So, some of the additional things that they're looking for are, again, it's almost like a, it's a work in progress. The whole implementation of management between housing authorities and so forth. But the big thing that I saw was they're looking for a deeper financial analysis on staffing, the administrative support. They, just like we look on our financials and we see seven programs, this is my perspective. They want to now add additional programs and now look at how it's staffed with all programs basically combined. And one school of thought is, you know, do it that way. Another school of thought is, it doesn't work that way. And, and like a, the fee accountant thinks that it's a much more simpler way to look at it versus this complex thing. So I've gotten the worksheets and I spoke to the fee accountant um, about it. And, um, you know, a, again, the housing authority, certainly we, we have a history of managing um, and, and a desire. Boards did have a joint meeting and entered into it. But um, at this point, there still is no management agreement. What did Duxbury say? What was Duxbury? Well, no, they, they are just as informed as, as you are. You know, that it went to the state. The state Initially, the state sent it back and wanted a breakout, and they had some edits that involved the, the fees involved. So we modified, moderated um, fees. We wordsmithed the document more. 
we developed a work plan, which you almost need to go in and manage a place for 60 days to develop a work plan. But nevertheless, we tried to develop one to incorporate from the get-go. Then it got into a less formal, you know, breaking out of employees, staff, time, and what the pay is going to be, um, to then coming out with this larger spreadsheet with multiple columns. Um, so at the present time, you know, it's it's in limbo. Um, Did they send a letter? Who? The state saying what, like exactly listing why? Well, though they they told us, and they they told us that there is work for us to compile, which is the spreadsheet. Did they send a letter? Um, I'm not sure. Did they send us the Just call? I know that they sent a letter to you and me. I had a letter. Talking about coming out yeah. like and next week. And the rest of us get a copy of that? Yeah. 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 I mean, it said that they were coming back out this year. I mean, this uh, next week. And I went through in the report um, what that entailed. You don't have a copy of that handy? Something you no. can pull off and grab for us? Hang on. Yeah, they're coming out to do work order systems, random inspections of units, accounts payables, and receivables. Um, now, Joanna, you asked that we insert it into the agenda too, so I did. Well, I just want to—I just want to make sure that the rest of the board receives that correspondence from the state specifying exactly why they weren't going to authorize. The there, what, yeah, but there, I think that didn't you get I that? Get yeah, the letter was written to the chair. So I will, um, Can you just read, can you just email it? I have it in my head. I don't want to find mine. Yeah. I've got it. Is it okay to home. email things? Yeah. I mean, do you want to do that? Yeah. I can, uh, of course, we know. We I'll, have to I'll try to find it over the weekend. And, uh, oh, I can find it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if my letter was the same as yours or not, but uh, they sent me a letter too. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, I, I it didn't. Yeah. Um, the letter basically just referenced in a follow-up. Every year the state comes out, but sometimes they come out quarterly and do things like that. So they had come out and uh, they said that they were going to be coming back out again. We set a date. I, I gave them the first date that they proposed, and then I got a synopsis of the work. Other than that, on the contract, the only other work that I thought they were looking for was the um, breakout staff, personal breakout. All right, so John, you'll try to find that letter. Yeah, to the I can do that. The the commission, I'll try to find that. You know, typically if there's any correspondence that comes from the state, is that something? It goes to the chair. They the mailed chair. it to me directly. They mailed it to her directly. Can I request that we all, every time there's some sort of mailing, email, anything, it gets sent to all of us the real way? Yes. Um, yeah, I think we can ask um, the director to do that. Mm -hmm. Just because what I'm hearing about what the letter was and what what you're saying are kind of two different things, so I'm just a little foggy. I heard that there was a specific letter and it was specifying personal use of vehicles and credit card expenses that are unexplained and missing receipts and stuff like that, so I'm just a little... Where, where did you hear that? From the state, and they asked me if I, sh I should probably just request a copy of the letter, so I'm just kind of confused. From the state? Yeah. It's just who, who from the state? It's really not important, but I just, I feel like, I'm just getting two different stories, so I'd like to kind of just make sure we get a copy of that letter so we all see it and just make sure who knows yeah. maybe it's a rumor, but I'd like to actually see it for myself before I just chalk it up as, yeah. I mean, there's got to be a reason why they didn't authorize the contract. You, you, didn't, you didn't see that in the letter, right? Well, my letter didn't say that, but uh, I don't know what I'm sure my letter did say that. It said something like we can send a letter to the executive director uh, with regard to I don't even remember, I can't it was a couple of weeks ago. Mm. And, yeah. So you'll just forward me the one that sent you there? Sure. It was definitely after the last board meeting or I would have brought it up then, but it was definitely after the last board meeting which me. I called John and said, Oh, you know, I got this letter and he said, Yeah, yeah. I'm 
mind what you say when you say. But I'll be happy to send home someone. So there's two letters, as far as you know that. There's two, there's one you got and one you got John, correct? No, there, well, it's the same well, letter. He just talked about credit cards and stuff. Well, that, yeah, that's what, jo that's what Joanna just said. Are you, yeah. And if that's, if that's what you're talking about, there, there was some, because that's the letter I'm going to send you, there was some reference, they came out like a year ago, um, and when they do their review, and there was a question about, you know, a couple of receipts here and there, and I can I can tell you right now that if, if it's a matter of finding a receipt, we can find a receipt. Um, I think that there was a, you mentioned that something about vehicles. Personal use of vehicles, you know, and at the time when I talked to him, it's it, it sort of um, came from when we have on-call staff and whether or not and they take the vehicle or when I had a vehicle, which was authorized by the board. Um, I don't recall what what. Uh, uh, I mean, I I think we probably use the use the credit card, you know, a handful of times a year, and it's clearly only used for housing authority business. I guess just if we can just put that on the next agenda to follow up with that, follow up with the letter, follow up with things that are coming out next week. Mm-hmm. And just to so make yeah. the next week. Definitely. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll pass my letter down and scan it. Yeah. And just so you know it's But mine was not specific. It just talked about sending a letter to the executive director with regard to something we meant to be wording. Yeah, and, and, and well, John, I said you get a letter from the agency. Yeah, I think even in the letter they said that uh, something to the effect like, um, "Sorry, it's taken so long to get get back to you." It's essentially a year later, um, and just a follow up. But it took a year from to get back to me. So if it was anything egregious, it would have been dealt with immediately. And you know, I'm not belittling anything. But if it was anything that serious in nature. I think that they would have. Uh, I guess the bottom line is there's, there's two letters that we can just get copied. Yes. Them, I guess yeah. that's all. That works. Yeah, it just, I, I, I don't, they don't just not authorize contracts just to hide that so many other No, they so said why they weren't authorizing it. They said they were looking for additional information from us. And my understanding was it was all administrative. And they're coming out to get this additional information. No, they're coming out. They, they said that they were going to be following up and coming out, and that what they wanted to do was. And they, there are four items, you know, work order systems, random inspections of some of the units, and accounts payable and receivable. Didn't talk about anything else. Um, so, uh, are we done with Jeff's story? For yeah, now? yeah, we'll just put it on the next agenda, and if you could just forward that to me. Yeah. Mr. Haley, just send it to me tomorrow, or whatever, or all, all of us. Yeah. We'll forward it to the board. I just like, yeah. I just like to... I just like to state though that on the Duxbury um, matter, which you know Joanna brought up, and we just spent some time talking about it. You know, I've heard an awful lot of things myself, in in recent days, weeks, even over a couple of months, and you know, with every day that goes by, and whether or not we can enter into an agreement, you know, whether or not there's mutual benefit, you know. I continue to look at it more and more closely and wonder if it really there is. And, I, and I'll certainly give the board an opinion whether or not I think that it's in our best interest to do it. Um, but, you know, I just don't want you to think that, um, that it is definitely going to happen one way or the other. Because, you know, I, I think ultimately there's going to be a business decision made. And if there is no mutual benefit or the benefit you know, was outweighed by additional work and so forth, you know, I will clearly make a recommendation that we maybe pass on and not be interested in it. While there are clearly others that are interested, you know, or, you know, to be a director there or to manage it. You know, I mean, I have a lot to do day in, day out, and I don't want to dilute my my talent or my resource or my industry working hard at what matters most to number of thousand. Um, that's, I guess we can go on okay, to new so business. Okay, so we'll launch new business. Uh, approve and adopt capital improvements in fiscal year 2017. 
2021. In your packet, that's the um, Excel sheet. We make a five-year projection you know, of what we hope to do. It also picks up some of the stuff that's active in the queue. You know, maybe at, a, at a, um, various stages. And this is all, uh, we do this with the state's uh, contractor. We go into um, SEMS, the Capital Improvement Management System, and uh, develop a very real uh, approach. We look at the needs, we, we um, prioritize them, and then we put in the, you know, best estimate mm -hmm. cost, you know, based on years of experience. And Rick Mahoney, we, we were talking about earlier, you know, he's been working in public housing for about 40 years, and you know, this is, he sure does. I'll make that motion to approve resolution 16-15 to approve and adopt the capital improvement plan for FY 2017 through FY 2021. Great. Can I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Resolution 1616 is, as the board may know, uh, we use Old Colony Planning Council to develop the utility allowance schedule that we use and rely upon when we do our determinations on, on rent affordability for uh, applicants and continued participants. I make the motion we approve and adopt 216 utility alarm schedules prepared by the Florida Senate. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, the next one is to rescind a contract. We had uh, put out previously, um, and the board voted to award a contract or a contractor on the roof replacement on this building. And what happened was uh, they hired a new estimator who came out and when we were having the, uh, an on-site meeting, they tried to, uh, well, they told us they couldn't do the job unless we increased the, the uh, contract sum. And um, so that's not a possibility, so we would need an action of the board to rescind that. I'll make that motion to rescind resolution 16-17 to rescind the previously awarded contract with Citywide Mass Painting Incorporated for the community building roof replacement at Kilcommon Drive. Uh, fish number 231-456. Can I just ask a question? The next resolution, that's, that's basically us now just giving it to the new... To the next bidder. Okay. Um, was Citywide the first company that came on here and did all the other groups? No. Separate no, a separate company. So that was a separate bid just for this? Yes. Yeah. So I have a second? Second. Great. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, resolution 16-18. Um, let's see. That's uh, to execute the contract for, as Joanna just said, community building roof replacement. This is the second bid up. So. Make a motion to award an offer as a director to execute contract for the community building roof replacement at Kill Commons. Petition number 231-056, the WPI Construction Inc., the amount of $16,700, the source of funds is... Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Sixteen nineteen is a change order. We have a project underway at McDonald Way. We're replacing um, exterior doors and frame replacement. And um, this this change order allows us to do uh, secondary set of doors for, at handicap units as well to expand the scope. No, no, uh, 16, no. yeah, 16, 19. Yeah. Oh. Well, it'll, 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 oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Right. Motion? What was the reason I started that? We added more, we added more to us. The scope expanded. So just, not just the primary and secondary egresses, but then to do the handicap to us. At McDonald's well. Way, right? At McDonald's Way. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Well, that's from the start of the oh, contract. Okay, okay, okay. It, you know, it's still okay. looking to be done this summer. <laughs> that was like, summer. That's kind of a very it's slow. a lot of doors. <laughs> no, no that, that took into account manufacturing. Okay. Once, it went, right. once it was awarded, then the doors all went out to get manufactured. I'll make the motion to approve resolution 16-19 to approve and authorize the director to execute change order number one to the contract of the Mello Construction Services Corp for the exterior door and frame replacement at McDonald's Way. Change order number one will result in an increase of $11,713.57 for the contract price and time extension of 209 calendar days. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 As the board knows, every year you have to do a link paint uh, certification compliance form. Even though they haven't been making it in a long time, we still have to do it by, required by law. Second. Aye. Aye. 1621 is to approve the contract for administering HUD. MA 070 of the Duxbury HCB Section 8 program. Again, this is just administering for the Section 8 program. I make a motion to table this resolution until the following meeting or on the agenda after you see the letter correspondence from the HCB as to why they denied it in the first place. Um, can I just add something on this? Mm -hmm. I specifically asked DHCD about this, and DHCD, Mary Farrell at DHCD, told me that. The, they don't care about the Section 8. Right, I understand that. They have no say of the Section 8 program, but I think that until we figure out what the reason is why they want to want to not authorize the contracts. To which contract? Just the whole, no, not Section 8. I understand it's two separate things. So, but, but I'm just concerned if they didn't authorize it, I would like to know why before we enter into a different contract with them. I think that we should probably just table it and hold off until the next meeting. We can continue to administer them anyway, right? Because we don't need the contract to do that, so. Doesn't the board have to approve it before we can just go in there and start taking over? We've already been managing this Section 8. They, they, we've been getting the halves done. So if we've already, I just, I'm so confused. If we've already been managing this Section 8, why is it just now on the, on the? It's only to take it out as a separate contract by itself. We because we had one contract started. that was mutually uh, agreed we upon, right. and it right. went to but the it state. Wasn't it wasn't ratified by right. the state. Which means we'd have to make a new contract for just the Section 8 program, correct? Well, be because that is out. Because that is because out. That is out right. Section 8 comes out so of it, which HUD and the HCD. We need to make a new can. contract to just manage the Section 8 program. Why is it that before that's been approved, we're already in there managing it if the board hasn't approved it as a whole? Because it doesn't have to be as a whole. It's just the Section 8 program. As, it has a whole, as the whole board. Yeah, yeah we're just administering. I, I, I understand that. I'm just talking about the board vote. The board voting to approve that contract. If the board hasn't voted, we voted on a whole contract as a whole. Well, not me, I wasn't here yet. The Pembroke board yeah. voted as a whole. If that is out the door because DHC didn't approve that, well, now we have to make a new contract. Well, I don't think we do, I guess, is my point. Well, then why is it on here as a resolution if we don't need a contract if you're asking us to approve a contract? It's very confusing. It's very, yeah. it's very back and forth. You know what? I guess the question is, can it be tabled? Does it affect anything by tabling until the next meeting? Does it or does it not? I don't think it affects anything. Does it? Then, then, I'll, I'll, then I'll second the motion to table it until the next meeting. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Who seconded that? I made the motion, Jim. Sorry. Okay. okay. Once, sorry, you, once you it. took, that, took right. over, I, I made a motion. Right. So just You're for right. clarification, we will not have our hands on their program until the next meeting when we address it again. And I don't get that though, because it's, if we're administering a Section 8 voucher, we continue to administer it. But if the, board has a, that's, if the board has to approve it, why are we doing it? Because the board doesn't have to approve just administering the contract. A, a voucher for the board doesn't have to approve administering a voucher. Our housing authorities do it all the time. If you move up from Florida and you come to Pembroke and you lease up in Pembroke, Pembroke would administer that voucher. We would get paid from 
the Orlando Housing Authority, but you don't enter into separate contracts with all those housing authorities to administer. But it's the board, the we would still have to approve it. No, you no, don't. No, 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 it's not no. a separate voucher. Because right. voucher is portable. So a right. voucher can go any place and you can, it's, you can it's, port it into a housing authority. And part of the contract is with Section 8 is right. that you administer whatever, whatever vouchers it's, are in it's your It's built into the federal regulations. So, but, but if you are administering the program that, 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 that delivers vouchers to residents, that's a different issue. So in other words, if you, if Duxbury has allocated a certain number of Section 8 vouchers and that's their Section 8 program, mm -hmm. and we, we administer all those 50 or whatever number of vouchers is, that's the Section 8 program, but which is different than managing a, a Section 8 voucher, which is ported into the town of Pembroke. So if we just want to administer the Section 8 program, whose decision is that? that well, to, uh, to administer the program, that, that's a different issue. Just the Section 8 piece. Just that, well, that, that, I think that that's it's a contract. I think it's a board issue. But if it's a, if it's a, if it's a voucher coming in, then that's, that's the... And it's not just the voucher coming in, it's us okay. actually taking the vouchers from Duxbury and saying, all right, Pembroke staff Manage the wait list, manage the wait list, manage right. the whole thing. So is that, the, is that the case? We're going to be managing the whole Section 8 program? Like, so our Section 8 staff will do the research, our Section 8 staff will do interims, will do checks, will do all of it. They do do that. When you administer a program, it's all encompassing. It's whatever you have. Okay. When people call because they uh, need to have a place inspected or they need to know what the um, reasonable rent is and they're looking to relocate or move, someone has to be managing it. And it's the board's decision to say Pembroke either wants to take those vouchers or we don't, right? I understand what you, you explained it very well. If we're managing the voucher putting in, yep. then you don't need a contract. Right. But this isn't the but case because we're not porting in. The we program. Program. We're this is a program. This is a program. So we probably do need a contract for that. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. So, okay. so, so if we're so just, if we're question, just doing... Me, so my big question is, why are we already doing it if the board hasn't approved it? That is what I can't wrap my head around. We're already doing it because it was an all-inclusive managing all their programs in the original agreement. But that is it, done. It, right. It, well, it's done now, so maybe we have to take a step back. That's right. That's, we, that's okay. Okay. That's and we did, like. okay. we did table it, so nothing's going right. to happen until the next meeting. So nothing okay. is, and we're not touching their Section 8 voters. That's what we already said, correct? That well, we weren't going to touch thought, on. That's what I thought, but yeah. said, no, we're already, we're already touching Well, is it possible now to... We can revert it back. Yeah. Oh, right. Right. It was thundering. No. It's fine. We can revert we can it back. Down. Well, how, many you know, do they have? how many sections do they have? Do you have to give a talk? 13. 13? Yeah. I have the answer. We're talking about 13, about 13 vouchers. I, I think oh, it's going to have a qualm. I think. Go. Uh, we have a qualm. It's only 13 vouchers. So uh, you know what? It's not a big deal. Yeah. yeah. I, know, I don't I mean, I, to be honest, I think. What's the will of the board? Can I? I say we table it until the next. I thought that was what we already did. I thought we did already table it. Yeah. Yeah. We did take it. Okay. You know, I, I just like to say, and there's only one other right. resolution, and maybe, maybe, I think, because we got to act responsibly for the interests of those we do business with, or hope to do business with, or just as a, just as a neighboring community. And, and I have to say, I, I am quite disturbed with the, um, I don't know, I, I, I guess I'd say I'm, I'm quite disturbed with the delay that has ensued, not to mention the, as I mentioned earlier, the manifestation of the cost-benefit analysis, whether or not we even want to manage next better. And at this point, you know, I and again, the board can do what it chooses to. And we did. So let's move on to I, If I may, uh, I'm just to the chair. Going to get rained. <laughs> no, but to the chair. I just, I'm just going to say that, you know what? If the board wanted to know if um, I felt we should even pursue managing Duxbury, it wouldn't be my my recommendation would be that we don't. Well, I think the board was interested in managing. Duxbury. The board we is. Sat here and I, yeah, and, and, so I, and we I appreciate that. In it, so However, I think we wait until the state comes out, as they're going to, as you, and, and we'll go from there. Yeah. If it's to be, it's to be, uh, I think. 
And it's not something that we want to, I don't think we want to throw it away just because of some questions I don't feel. No, it, it, it's not. It's just that it seems that there's more to it. And I think that Duxbury needs to, I don't want to see Duxbury, I wouldn't want to see Pembroke in such a, you know, neutral area where there's not, you know, they need someone at the helm. They have an interim. I know that they do. I know that they do. And, you know, I don't know that, uh, well, you know what, my your board can act how it chooses to, but my, my suggestion at this point is, if, if, this is, if this is where we're headed with it, that it's not in our best interest to manage Duxbury, and we should let Duxbury, you know, go to an alternative plan. I don't know if the board's prepared to make that. No, decision. yeah, no. okay. And, and, the, and the board wanted to be a part of their, of their plan, and we had already decided that. So, okay. so I think let's just see where the next couple of weeks takes us, or the next meeting takes us, and we'll go from there. Okay. Resolution oh, sixteen twenty two. We have a form for the last That's all right. Reso <laughs> Resolution sixteen twenty two. This is easy. This okay. is, this the, is the housing authority has to have a chief procurement officer. Yeah, sir. I'll, I'll make the motion resolution sixteen dash twenty two to appoint John McCown as chief procurement officer for the Pembroke Housing Authority. I have a second. Second. All those in favor. I. You can have it. <laughs> well, one question: Have you taken the chief procurement? Yeah, you so, have, uh, what the heck's her name? Peck Grace. We all right. well, Grace. Did, did I say No, we didn't. No. Motion. Just, just real quick. Okay. So on the next agenda, there's going to be those couple things. Not story uh, in the letters, yeah. Um, I also think, I don't believe we're going to sell. I have to vote on it or do it, but I think that we should probably have Attorney Grace back in here to do, like, now that there's two new members, maybe do, like, another quick. Training seminars would be good. We'll get Rick Shore in here to do the budget training. Maybe I've heard you open meeting one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she was good when she came in. Yeah. All right. I'll be interested. I'll come up one time. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Can I have a second? Wait, wait, one quick second. Yeah. July. Yeah. All right. Is there anyone that has vacations that may not make when it? When is the first? The fourth is on a Monday. So, so the fifth. Tuesday. Then it was a Tuesday. So it would be July 5th. I'm okay. Tuesday is the fifth. I'm okay with positive. It's Monday okay. All right. Okay. Great. We'll have a forum. Okay. Yeah, I'll, so I'll be in touch. Did I have a second to motion? Yeah, 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 yeah. All those in favor. Aye. Aye.